Hello and welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. Today we got some more actual history for you from this book right here. History of the Early Settlement and Indian Wars of West Virginia by Wills de Haas, published all the way back in 1851. Now today's story is another one from West Virginia during the French and Indian War around 1757. This follows up a previous episode I've done from this book where Mrs. Neff was kidnapped. These repeated depredations of the Indians induced Government Dinwiddie early in 1756 to order an expedition against the Indian towns on the Ohio. Major Andrew Lewis was appointed to command this expedition and directed to proceed against the Shawnese villages near the mouth of the Great Kanawha. Major Lewis led his men through great peril and suffering within a few miles of the Ohio River when a message ordering a return of the expedition reached him. The whole party suffered intensely during this march, and once they were reduced to the necessity of cutting their buffalo skins into tugs and eating them, hence the name of Tug River. The Indians, having noticed the advance and return of this expedition, naturally supposed that it was deemed unsafe to penetrate the Indian country, with a force so inadequate to the duty before them, and thus elated, they pushed their acts of depredation with increased fury. They struck across the mountains by way of the Kanawha, Monongahela, and Cheat rivers, carrying death to many a helpless family, and spreading alarm throughout the entire valley. In the summer of 1757, a body of Shawnees, led on by their celebrated chief, Kilbuck, crossed the Alleghenies and committed various acts of depredation. Some 30 or 40 of this party appeared in the neighborhood of Edwards Fort and killed two men at a mill, whom they scalped and then made off, taking with them a quantity of meal. Information having been conveyed to the fort, 40 men under Captain Mercer started in pursuit of the murderers. The Indians, expecting this, concealed themselves beneath a bank and awaited the approach of the whites. As a decoy, they had strewn along the path some of the meal taken from the mill. Mercer's party, discovering this, supposed the Indians were making a speedy retreat, and not apprised of their strength, moved on at a brisk step until the whole party were drawn immediately over the line of Indians beneath the bank, when the latter opened a most destructive fire upon them, sixteen falling dead at the first discharge. The others, attempting to save themselves by flight, were pursued and slaughtered in every direction until out of the forty, but six escaped to the fort. One poor fellow who ran up the side of the mountain was fired at by an Indian. The ball penetrated just above his heel, ranged up his leg, shivering the bones, and lodged a little below his knee. He slipped under the lap of a fallen tree, and there he hid himself, and lay in that situation for two days and nights before he was discovered by his friends. It was that length of time before the people at the fort would venture out to collect and bury the dead. This wounded man recovered and lived many years after. Some time afterwards, the Indians in much greater force, and aided, it was believed, by several whites, determined to carry this fort by storm. The garrison had been considerably reinforced, among others, by the late General Daniel Morgan, then a young man. The Indians made the assault with great boldness, but on this occasion they met with a sad reverse of fortune. The garrison sallied out, and a desperate battle ensued. The assailants were defeated with great slaughter while the whites lost comparatively but few men. These constant inroads of the Indians induced the people to erect suitable forts at convenient points. Many of these little stockades arose along the valley, which greatly served to protect the inhabitants and restrain the Indians. Of these were Ashby's on Patterson Creek, near the present town of Frankfurt, hedges on the road from Martinsburg to Bath, Riddles and Wardens on Lost River, and Georgia's near Petersburg. So that's it for this story. These events took place around 1757 in West Virginia during the French and Indian War. So this is the second episode in this playlist on the Indian Wars of West Virginia. 
You can also check out my other playlist on the French and Indian War, which is taking place around the same time over in Pennsylvania, where the Delawares are invading some of the Pennsylvania German settlements. So if you want to see more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.